Uh, so hello, my name is Anna Wojciechowska. I'm a software engineer. All my life I worked with software in different companies. Since uh, seven years I live in Oslo. I work for QT company. And recently, uh, before around COVID, I decided to pick up a hobby, surfing, which, can you, which you can do in Norway. And as a software engineer, I uh, started to look at the forecast as a dashboard and thinking that the forecast is generated by some sort of the uh, software model that is probably badly tuned because each time I was showing up at the beach, uh, the waves were not exactly there. So I was quite confused because it took me some time to arrive. And I was thinking maybe, naively thinking, but naive motivation is a good motivation. Uh, I was thinking maybe I can improve this forecast. So I was thinking, what do I need to improve? Of course, I need to know how good are the waves uh, that, um, that are showing up. And I can maybe compare it to the actual forecast and then know how much it's off and do something about this. So how would you measure the waves? It's a bit tricky task because um, if you look at this from like a sports perspective, you might think, just look at this, compare it to some surfer in the water, and you will know uh, the height. The point is, like, the surfers are not always in the water, and if you just judge the height from the looking at the waves, you will not get the right measurements because they have some sort of fractal nature, so they are self-similar. But the problem of measuring waves, it's already sorted by science. You have all sorts of different measurements. So you have gyroscope-based wave boys, you have laser measurements, you have ultrasound, then you have the satellites. And then there was just one problem with all those devices. They were just insanely expensive. This was just the, the amount of like, and I talk about when I started a few years ago, it was the, the amount of like hundreds of thousands of kroners. So basically it was not available for me. But I was not discouraged. I was highly motivated by the frustration. <laughs> and. The <laughs> And then um, I was searching and somebody told me that there are things like uh, pressure uh, measurements and there are pressure sensors that work underwater. And they only knew that they work underwater, that was enough for me. So what was, what's the physical idea? You basically try to measure kind of uh, hydrostatic pressure. It's not exactly only hydrostatic pressure, but the simplified uh, formula is uh, if you put a sensor at the bottom of your beach when you want to surf, and there is the wave going over the sensor. Uh, if you look at the projection, you will have some sort of uh, water column that will change its height. So if you will have the highest point of the wave, uh, the crest, you will have slightly higher water column than in the lowest point of the wave. And basically just measuring this height difference, you will have a pressure a difference. And if you measure it or sample it often enough, then you will have some sort of uh, uh, time series of the pressure and then you can recalculate it to actual height and then you can keep on processing the data you can get the you can run a Fourier transform on it and get the spectrum and then you have all the data that you need to improve the forecast so um, I soon discovered that there is the whole movement of open source hardware so I only had the software engineer perspective so basically, I figure out that this open source hardware is kind of similar to open source software movement. Basically, there are um, like equivalent of the software, it's uh, of the source code is there are available open designs, uh, schematics, and there are uh, Gerber files. And basically, if you get them, you can create your own hardware. And I found a project done by a marine biologist from the San Diego University. And I decided, OK, I will just do it. The only problem was I didn't even know where to start. So I had like a classic education. I knew that semiconductors exist. I've seen some Maxwell equations, but that, that not necessarily helps you with building the stuff. But actually, I was like still obsessed with doing the sensor. And people started to help me. And somebody told me that there are the maker spaces. And that was the thing I actually need. It's because there were the places where you can join, you can meet people who have all the experience and they can answer all your questions, and they have all the gear that I didn't have. Because when I started, I didn't even own a multimeter. So this is just a very simplified idea. 
Um, on this side, you see the assembled device. It has a sandwich architecture. So there are three boards. And the reason why it's a sandwich architecture is because it's supposed to be put into the pipe and then put at the bottom of the, of the sea. And this is very simplified um, um, hardware architecture. Um, most important part, you have your pressure sensor that is connected to uh, commonly used uh, microcontroller I used at MEGA. And then all the data is stored in your memory card. And additionally, you have your extra real-time clock because you need a time series data. Uh, so you need to have a timestamp on your data. So, where do, so uh, the starting was a bit complicated for me. Luckily, I had friends. So they explained me that there are things called bill of materials, which is basically a very long shopping list of all those elements. They were around 30. And then you place the order. So even placing an order was kind of a challenge. And once when you have all the elements, and I started my project in COVID times, so there was uh, a component crisis. But I managed to buy all the parts. Some of them I had to buy on eBay. And then uh, what you do, so you order what is called a print printed circuit board, which is basically all the cables printed on the board. And all you have to do, put kind of glue, which is like soldering paste. You work under microscope. And then you put all those components. And here are just all the components that are on the CPU board. So here you can see the actual Atmega and the real-time clock. And everything is quite small. It's like less than millimeters sometimes. And then you just put it to the oven. And I would joke that some people bake cookies, and I was baking the, the boards. <laughs> and then you end up with a shiny new board. And basically, the story should finish here, because I should just show you the data. But I had to also upload software. I connected it. I was using Arduino IDE. And then I had a problem, because initialization failed. I should check the connection and so on. So basically, uh, I had a design that I followed to the letter, and uh, my device was not working. And I was like, well, how can I figure out what, what should I do to make it work? How can I test if the things are actually working? So of course, you do the visual test. So you compare if you have the right elements. You double check all the connection. You do connectivity tests. And then, because I had the software uh, background, the, the idea was, can you debug hardware? And it turns out, to some degree, you can, uh, because you can break down the whole project uh, to actually uh, mark all the wires. And you can compare it to another at Mega and just see the differences. If Because I started to be suspicious about uh, the actual MCU. And there are also this kind of devices. Um, uh, the socket, when you can put your Atmega, because it's, it's very small, so it's really physically hard to connect the wires. And then you can connect all those wires and, and double check if, if things are working as they should. So what I figure out, I've discovered that the problem was with my Atmega. And uh, as I said uh, earlier, um, I bought my Atmega on eBay. And uh, I knew that maybe you shouldn't do this, but there was like component crisis. And I thought, like, maybe if I diversify it and I buy from different users, then one of them would be legit. But also, like, if you diversify, it, there is like higher risk that you will buy the wrong one. So I just wanted to know that most likely I bought the wrong one because I asked my dentist to x ray the <laughs> Atmega. <laughs> So she did a favor, and you can see that one of them is not exactly wired. Um, so uh, that was probably the reason why it didn't work. Anyway, I, made, I managed to make it working. And then there was the next step, because the sensor should work underwater. So you need to kind of waterproof it. So those are all elements um, that, um, that are part of the housing. And then uh, when I was doing my housing, uh, because it sh sh should work underwater, and there is lots of pressure, then when you buy your pipes, you need to make sure that the pipes are certified, that they, um, I was buying them from the um, uh, swimming pool shop. They were certified to 10 um, bars. So then I've discovered that the ocean is not exactly your friend, and electronics and salt water, which is very um, uh, conductive, are not exactly friends. And also, I've discovered the meaning of smoke tests, because occasionally uh, my board would smoke. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> 
um, and uh, as an occasion, and most of the hardware testing is actually destructive testing, so you have to buy uh, plenty of boards, and if you do your projects in Norway each time, you usually do your shopping in some uh, abroad shops, you have to pay tolls, you have to pay shopping, uh, you have to pay um, 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 sending fees, so it, it really costs you and delays you with the project. So. Things that I've learned is that threaded connection is not the good idea. The best ones are the flange connection, and there is this the whole fla flange geology. So basically, if you want to make it really waterproof, you have to think about the gasket, and the gasket should also be made of the rubber that would work in the marine environment. And even if you have the screws, the screws should be of possibly marine grade, and then the whole electronics, you can actually protect your electronics from uh, water and salt water um, exposure. There are uh, different ways to do it. One of the ways is just put everything in the epoxy resin. But I still had like uh, some connections and my SD card that I have to took out. Mm -hmm. So I was um, using the conformal coating. So one of the things I've even discovered that like, the device is working underwater uh, the rubber actually can conduct a little bit of salt moisture, and if it accumulates, uh, it can impact uh, your uh, device. And also, I one should remember that uh, the device that is actually conducting electricity will um, corrode faster. So then, the next step is uh, that's an actual sensor. And this sensor was designed for uh, working in the fresh water, not exactly salt water. So then you have to adapt it to the salt water environment. So you do a trick, you create an oil bladder with the mineral oil and the water is actually squeezing the actual um, uh, oil bag instead of your sensor. So it's protected. So there is another story how to make it solid and double check that it's uh, working as designed. And then the, the next things that I've learned is all the gluology. I would say, so um, <laughs> you discover that all those glues has different this viscosity. And even if you test them in like the bathroom environment and you believe it's uh, watertight, and then you put it uh, on some uh, depth with water, it can turn out that there can be some air bubbles that can create the maze and the uh, water will go through this maze. So that's like another uh, level of difficulty to make everything work. But I managed to make it work. This is another story, like the barnacles will grow. Once I even found the fish in the sensor, because like was <laughs> uh, I was keep on testing it. But I managed to make it work. And that's uh, some overview of the software architecture. So basically, the magic major code was in C. I was using Arduino. Um, then it was working on my Atmega. And the output was uh, C CSV files. And then I just wrote a simple uh, uh, Python script. And because I was still experimenting with, uh, with my data, I was just using time series database in Flux and sh sh visualizing things in Grafana uh, because I was mostly concerned about my data. So that was like a short prototyping pipe. So here are examples of my results. So the first things you need to check is doing the hydrostatic tests. Like you make your sensor measure a uh, column of, of water and you just add this water and make sure that the pressure is uh, uh, proportional to the height of the water in the column. And then uh, there are another uh, results of tests like I put it in the Sciolis Marina, then I was comparing to the Oslotite uh, data from Kartreverket. This is the data from the um, uh, Portugal. Uh, if you zoom out and you have like one day of data, you will register tight. But if you zoom in, you will have all the small waves uh, and the ripples uh, visible. The next learn that I've learned is there is no such a thing as being overprepared. Why do I tell about this? So I did all sorts of tests. I uh, occasionally had to hire some diver and I thought that everything worked. And I still had my first prototype and I decided to go for a holidays. Uh, this is Shikama, one of the best beaches, uh, one of the best uh, point breaks in the world. And I was very excited to get um, data about perfect waves. That's like a um, surfer's dream. And as usual, I found um, divers. They went down um, and installed my sensor. I had like over a week. I hope to have over a week of data. 
And then, <laughs> yeah, again, I only got four seconds of data. So what happened? <laughs> so I occasionally noticed that the device would reset itself, but it was reset itself. So I was a little bit ignoring, and I also the project was quite large. So what happens? Basically, the power connection failed. So then I was uh, kind of down, um, but I decided, okay, I will just improve everything. So I will uh, improve the battery holder. I will change the PVC wires to silicon wi ones. I stopped even trusting in GSTPH connection. So I did crimpled my own uh, cables just because I just really wanted to make sure that things actually work. And then I concluded, because there is this rule that the chain is as strong as its weakest link. And you can like, put as much energy as you can to make sure everything will work, but the Murphy laws also work. So basically, um, I decided, okay, so if I cannot trust single devices, and I am able to build several devices, so maybe I can build several sensors, because the total cost and the total work of building several sensors is not uh, is, is kind of comparable to one. And then I've decided to, okay, I will just build as many sensors as I can during the summer, and I've discovered that actually building those boards, it's not exactly a repeatable process. So on the one side of those images, you will see the sensors that, that work, that the boards that work. On the other side are the ones that don't work. People who are experienced have less of the not working part. But um, the, 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 the things that I've learned, it's like even if I would have the very same components from the very same producer bought from some respectable and trustworthy distributor and I would assemble it in a very same way using the very same gear in the same room there would be like slight difference in, in the data so here are four assembled sensors uh, that were measuring atmospheric pressure in my room and then I would just leave it uh, to compare the data and you will you can see there is not exactly a shift between them. One of them, uh, the orange one, should be removed uh, from usage. And then the shift is around two megabars that would correspond to two centimeters of water. So just to tell, uh, because mostly when we work with the data, we have the data kind of cleaned and we don't see the, uh, all the dirty data details. So then the next thing that I've learned is, uh, because the project was quite large and occasionally I had to um, um, convince uh, divers to help me and negotiate the price. So if you show something, it's still working prototype. Like all of those devices have exactly the same um, electronics inside. But the first one was the, the first that I uh, built. I've used the protective white pipe, so it looked like a bit as a kitchen plumbing. And the trick was like I basically replaced the white pipe with the black one paid a little bit more money and then it looked a little bit more neat. So then people are kind of more trustworthy to your project. <laughs> <laughs> and like, they don't examine you that much and they can't believe this is an actual software, uh, sorry, sensor. Uh, so where I am now, my sensors are in the, uh, uh, on this below the uh, surfing beach, I would say. And now I've discovered there are new problems. GPS is not exactly accurate, so you need to recover it. You can put some markings, but then there is another there is another set of problems with mooring and making sure that all your markings will survive and making sure that nobody will steal those markings. So this is like the whole new story with um, with retrieving the data. But uh, I may manage to make it work. I've also learned how to drill in the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> uh, yes. So that's all from me. Thank you.